My sister's boyfriend brought his own food to my dinner, then demanded an apology. Now our family is divided over his keto obsession. I, 28F, invited my sister, 25F, and her boyfriend, 26M, over for dinner. I love cooking and had spent hours preparing this fancy meal. Homemade pasta, a slow-cooked ragu, a salad, and a tiramisu for dessert. I was really proud of it and excited to have them over. When they arrived, everything was fine at first. We sat down, and I started serving the food. Her boyfriend, let's call him Steve, stared at the pasta for a moment, then looked at me and said, I don't eat carbs. At first I thought he was joking, but nope, he was dead serious. He goes on about how he's super into keto and carbs are the enemy. Okay, fine, that's his choice. But when I offered to make him a salad or something else on the spot, he refused and said that I should have known about his diet beforehand. This is where it gets weird. Da. He then pulls out a small Tupperware container from his bag, filled with what looked like boiled chicken and broccoli, and starts to eat it at my dinner table while the rest of us are trying to enjoy the meal I spent hours making. I was stunned and honestly kind of insulted. I told him it was rude to bring his own food without mentioning it to me beforehand, and he should have at least given me a heads up. He then goes off about how people need to respect his dietary choices and that I was being controlling by not accommodating his needs. At this point, I'd had enough. I told him, if you can't eat what's served and won't even let me make something else, then maybe you should just get out. He stood up, said something like I'm just trying to be healthy, grabbed his Tupperware, and walked out. My sister stayed for a bit but eventually left too, saying I overreacted. Now my sister's mad at me, saying I embarrassed her boyfriend and made them both feel unwelcome. My mom thinks I should apologize, but my friends are on my side, saying Steve was being incredibly rude. Out of her telling him to get out. Update. Things have escalated in a way I never expected. After my initial post, I figured things would calm down once my sister had time to cool off. Spoiler alert, they did not. So, the day after I told Steve to leave, my sister texts me saying they want to talk things through at a family dinner. I assumed it would be just the three of us, maybe at a neutral restaurant, where we could hash it out like adults. So nope, instead, my sister invites my parents, my brother, and Steve's parents to this dinner at my parents' house, turning it into some kind of weird intervention. I show up thinking it'll just be a casual conversation, but the moment I walk in, Steve's mom, let's call her Carol, is already going off about how Steve has always had special dietary needs and how people who care about him should respect his boundaries. The woman acts like the guy has a life-threatening allergy, not a trendy diet. My mom is sitting there looking super uncomfortable, while my dad's just quietly sipping his beer, uns clearly wishing he were anywhere else. So, Carol starts listing off Steve's dietary restrictions, and she's acted high personally offended the whole keto community by serving pasta. So then, brace yourselves, Carol pulls out a folder, yes, a literal folder with printouts. She hands one to me, one to my mom, and one to my dad. I'm flipping through this thing, and it's full of Steve's dietary guidelines, suggested meal plans, and even a list of keto-friendly restaurants we could go to in the future. At this point, I'm doing everything I cannot to laugh. But it gets worse. Steve pipes up and says he's willing to forgive me for disrespecting his lifestyle if I agree to host a redo dinner where I follow his dietary restrictions to the letter. He says this will prove I'm serious about making amends and respecting his needs going forward. I thought he was joking, but no, he was dead serious. He even pulled out his phone to show me some keto recipe apps that I might find helpful. I was in total shock. My sister, by the way, said absolutely nothing during all of this, just staring at her plate like she wanted to disappear. My mom, bless her, tries to smooth things over by suggesting we all just eat whatever we want when we're together, but Carol snaps, it's not that simple. She says that in their family, they all follow keto together, and that's why Steve is so passionate about it. At this point, I've had enough. I stood up and said, look, I'm not redoing the dinner. I'm not making anyone a special keto feast. If Steve can't eat what I cook, that's fine, but bringing his own meal to my dinner without even telling me was disrespectful, and I'm not apologizing for feeling that way. And then, this is where it gets absolutely bonkers. Steve's dad stands up, points at me, and says, this is exactly why Steve doesn't trust women to understand him. They always make it about themselves. The whole room went silent. My dad finally spoke up, saying, I think it's time for you all to leave, and started walking toward the door, basically escorting Steve's parents out. Steve and my sister stayed behind, but Steve was furious. He started yelling about how families should support each other, and then accused me of trying to sabotage their relationship because I'm jealous of what they have. At that point, I just walked out and left the whole mess behind. Here's the kicker, though. A couple of days later, my sister called me and told me she and Steve were taking a break because she needed time to think. Apparently, this whole keto fiasco was the last straw in a long list of controlling behavior from Steve. She didn't realize just how bad it was until the whole family saw it play out at dinner. She even told me that Steve had been trying to get her to follow his diet for months, 
but she was hiding snacks in her car just to get a break from all the keto madness. So now, Steve's gone full radio silent. My sister is staying with me for the time being, and I'm still getting passive-aggressive texts from Carol about how hurt Steve is and how he's just misunderstood. Honestly, I'm just glad my sister is finally seeing how controlling this guy was. I just found out that my half-sibling is my full biological sibling. I think I need to provide context on this one. I'm 25F and my parents divorced when I was three. They just didn't think they loved each other anymore and started dating, dating other people. My mom, my mom got married after two years when I was five and gave birth to my half-brother two years after that. My father married when I was 11, but they didn't have any kids. I live with my mom on work days and live on weekends with my dad. I have a very good and healthy relationship with both parents and my brother. I wanted to do those 23 and me tests since the only thing I know about my ancestry is that my dad is Russian. I was talking to my now 18-year-old brother and asked him if he wanted to do it with me, and he said yeah, so I sent two samples to the lab and the results came yesterday, and I opened them, and as the title says we are full biological siblings. I can't be my stepfather's child because my ancestry obviously indicates that I am half East European, Russian, and other parts of Europe which my stepfather clearly isn't, and my half-siblings, well now full sibling I guess. Ancestry is similar to my ancestry. So that could only mean that my brother is my dad's son. I really don't see the similarity between him and my dad, but maybe it's because my brother is a twin of my mom. So my mom cheated on my stepfather with my dad after saying that they didn't love each other anymore. What? But I don't want to jump into conclusions and I will ask my mom about this today when I get out of work so wish me luck. Update. I wanted to say that I really appreciate your support and I would like to answer some questions before I continue. Yes, my father is my biological dad, not just because he is Russian, but because we have taken a DNA test for another thing. Not because my dad thought I wasn't a so get it out of your head. And he is actually the best dad ever. No mom didn't cheat on my dad in their relationship. My stepfather is very Italian with the accent and everything both me and my brother don't have a speck of Italian in the results. His mother would come from Italy and visit us. No, there is no third shooter. Now let's go to the actual update. Me and my mom have this tradition we spend the evening together like a girl's night every once in two months I asked her if we could do it tonight. It's 2 a.m. currently, so it was technically yesterday. And she said yes. I got to her home and we did what we usually do. Bake something, eat the bake something while watching a movie of my choice and talk about things while wearing a weird facial mask. I decided that since the mood is so cool, why not ask her the question? I was like, hey mom, you know about those 23 and me tests, right? She didn't, so I started giving a speech about the test. After explaining it, I told her I did it with Jordan, my brother, and it came out weird. She asked what I meant by weird I told her, that the test said that we are fully related to one another and I kinda laughed, but she stayed quiet. It was wrong, right? I asked her. She got angry at me and asked why I did the test with my brother without asking her first. That's when the realization hit me I got defensive and asked her if she was serious. She apologized and just sat there for a minute or two. She told me that it was a one-time mistake. So basically 19 years ago, I was in my dad's home napping mom, came to take me, but I was sleeping and dad told her that she could cone later and take me or stay, and pack my things before I left to her home. She stayed, and they ended up doing the dirty? I guess? Don't let anyone tell you that sleeping doesn't save lives cause it created my brother's lull. I was pissed at mom and dad, and asked her how she could do that. She said that it was an accident, and they have never done it after that day, and she didn't even know that my brother was my dad's until now. I was angry at both of them, they don't understand how much of a problem this could create. My brother literally had a fat crush on my cousin from my dad's side. Well, now our dad, I guess. But it faded away, Jesus Christ, I even helped him flirt with her. Shit, I don't even know what to say. I am still too shocked and disgusted. Jordan literally spent years learning Italian just to speak to his grandma. I think I need a proper DNA test without my brother knowing to get some kind of closure. Edit, I have called my boss and said that I can't come tomorrow. I have also called my dad and asked if we could meet so both of my parents talk and so I could convince him to give a sample for the DNA test. Update 2. This is going to be a long update, but here we go, I guess. A lot has happened since I last updated. I have talked to my dad and mom and we told him about everything and he reacted like any middle-aged Russian guy with crippling anger issues and has worked for a sketchy Russian organization that starts with a K and ends with B. May or may not have G in the middle would react. If you work for the CIA and are reading this, this is a joke. Well, at least the KGB part. He was angry a bit sad and pissed at mom thinking she hid the fact that he is the father on purpose because she didn't want to end her already done for marriage and things were heated between them. Okay, I need you to imagine this a five feet five inches woman slapping a six foot something angry dude 
because that's what happened between my mom and my dad. I got between them before my dad returned the slap, and it took a lot of talking and screaming to calm things down between dad and mom, but mom left after a while of not agreeing it was a shit show. Once mom left, I asked dad if he can give a sample for the Deanna test, and he agreed. I took brother's sample in a rather questionable way, but I did the job. The test came back on Tuesday, and yes, dad is Jordan's biological father. I told my mom that it's time to tell Jordan and that we can't hide this from him. She was against the idea, but I did what I had to do. I called him and asked if he could come to my house if he doesn't have classes, he agreed, and came to my apartment yesterday. He got in and asked me if everything was all right. I told him that stepfather wasn't his real dad and showed him the results of the DNA test. I guess I kind of shoved it in his face. He didn't say anything for a few minutes and just kept looking at the DNA test I sat beside him. I didn't know what to do in this situation. I hugged him and asked him if he was okay. He hugged me back and said that he was all right, but it was so obvious that he was going to cry. He told me that he kind of knew that stepdad wasn't really high dad and I was like, excuse me. In my mind, of course. So basically his blood type is ab mom has same blood type as him and stepdad had a, which is a fact I didn't know. You guys see what's wrong here, right? I can't explain what's wrong, so Google it, I guess. So, but Jordan didn't know who his real father was, so he was shocked when he found out that dad was also his dad. I asked him why he didn't say anything, till now he said that he didn't want to face the truth I asked him, if he wanted stepdad to know, and he wasn't really fond of this idea. He stayed in my house yesterday, and I guess he is fine for now. But what's been bothering me is that mom is not dumb, okay, stepdad? Maybe a little bit dumb, but mom isn't that dumb to not notice it. She is calling both of us, but I guess it's not the right time for another argument. Next story, I am 23 and male. I am the middle child of my parents, 54 male and 53 female, and I have an older sister, 25, and a younger brother, 19. I've been living away from my family for five years with the very bare minimum of contact because right around when I turned 15, my dad's stuff started disappearing from his room. He has a pocket knife collection filled with different knives that he has collected from across the U.S., and some of them are pretty decently valuable, not worth like several grand or anything, but some of these probably fetch for a few hundred. He also has a collection of baseball cards and autographed baseballs. These items would vanish from his room and end up in my room, and each time I got punished for it, and each time was more severe than the last. I was looked at by my entire immediate family as a thief for three years, even though I constantly pleaded my innocence to them. I missed out on a few vacations, didn't have a 17th birthday celebration at all, didn't get my driver's license or a car until after I moved out, and I didn't have a job and had no way to save money aside from past birthdays and odd chores around my neighborhood. I remember my dad and mom telling me how much of a disappointment I was and that they wouldn't be surprised if I ended up in the local news as a robbery suspect or worse. My extended family wasn't much help either and saw me in the same light. It got so bad to the point where I genuinely wondered if I was actually stealing and not remembering it at all, either through some kind of mental struggle or doing it in my sleep or anything. Earlier this week, I got a call from my mom. My dad had noticed that his things started disappearing again without me being there and finally had the bright idea to set up cameras in the hall where my brother was caught taking stuff and putting them in my sister's old room. Mom told me about that and then said that she and my dad both apologized to me for not believing me and that they would love to have me over for her birthday dinner to catch up. I asked her what her plan for my brother's punishment was and she got confused. I asked her again, reminded her that I was forced to miss out on a birthday, multiple vacations, and my driver's license at 16. She said my dad took his phone for a week and his video games for a month, I lost it on her and berated them for treating me way worse while I was being framed for being a thief, while the actual thief only had his phone confiscated. I then said I will not be attending any events with them for the future, and I said you guys can go fuck yourselves. I hung up and blocked her number. I then got a call later from my sister who told me that while my rage is very much justified, my mother is inconsolable and has locked herself in our parents' bedroom. Ida, update my sister, who I will call T for simplicity, called me about an hour ago as of the time I'm writing this and apologized for what she told me. Me and her have been very close ever since I moved out and she has been known to step up and apologize when she is in the wrong. No hard feelings towards her at all. As far as my parents go, my mother had an overnight epiphany according to T. She ended up kicking my brother, who I will call J, out of the house after they were able to make him admit to doing this for years. Mom told T that he was sent to my granddad's house where he will be forced to get a job and pay rent as well as his own tuition now. My dad initially fought with her on this until she made him realize just how badly he was tearing this family apart. My dad then called me, apologizing profusely, telling me I don't ever have to see them again and that they would totally understand it, but they would love the chance to make amends and fix what they damaged. He offered to gift me the amount of money I owed for loans plus an extra $5,000 for keeps. So I told him I will think it over, but it might take me a while. 
I did accept his apology, but I haven't forgiven either of them yet, and I hung up. My mom doesn't know that me and T have kept in contact as I live about two hours away from my parents and three plus hours from her. And T relayed to me that my mom and my dad were thinking about selling some stuff they own and taking extra shifts at each of their jobs so they can get me a brand new vehicle as a surprise. I don't know how this is going to sound, but I'd rather not take a car or any extra money off of them as A. Everything that I own so far I earned through my hard work, and B, I feel like just buying your child's affection back is a lazy way to reconcile. As far as the situation goes, I did unblock my mom, but I will not be initiating conversation unless she or my dad texts first. Also, they did make an apology on Facebook to me and scolded my brother for what happened, so at least my extended family knows now. I might update if something else happens, but that's all I got right now. Comments before update two. It's nice that they now know you were framed and that they want to make amends. However, they are not owed forgiveness, and they are not entitled to a relationship with you. If you do choose to give them a chance, start slow. They need to earn back your trust, and that doesn't happen overnight. Take some time to think about what boundaries and expectations you need to put in place to feel comfortable resuming contact with them. For example, after everything your brother has put everyone through, if you don't want to see him or if you don't want them to discuss your life with him, they need to respect that. If they can't respect that boundary, let them know how you will respond. Good luck. Up. I doubt I'm going to reconcile fully. Their apologies feel more or less like they're sorry because they feel guilty more so than they're sorry because they wronged me and want to make it better. My brother is dead to me though. Nothing he could do could fix this. Commenter. Accept the money, you are entitled to that, and it's the freaking least they can give you for being such an awful parents and for the bad treatments. But don't accept the car, because if you accept it, they will try to make you feel guilty for not forgiving them, even though they tried to make it up to you with gifts. But if you don't accept anything from them, you won't even give them a chance to try to make you feel guilty for not forgiving them, and they wouldn't have the opportunity to gaslight you. Although in the end it is your decision, you can still block them once you obtain the car. You can take it as part of your compensation also, haha. Look, it's your decision if you want to forgive them and have them back in your life or not. I personally wouldn't do it. But I am very sure of one thing, you don't owe them anything. No forgiveness, no meeting, or anything. They treated you like trash for a long time, no one will blame you if you decide to not forgive them. And the best of all is that you are independent, you can survive without them so you can tell them to go to hell as much as you want. Just make sure you meditate and think about what you want to do. Update 2 I got a call from T. My brother Jay got arrested for stealing my grandpa's truck keys and hitting a streetlight about 2 miles out from their house late last night, 9.25. We'll update when I get more details, as I'm going to call my dad about it. Stay tuned. So my brother has not taken to his new living arrangements well at all. He hasn't gone out to look for work, and yesterday he was caught trying to break into Grandpa's safe right before he stole the truck. He was going too fast and unintentionally hit the streetlight. He didn't have any injuries, but the truck is possibly totaled and my grandparents kicked him out too. He now has no home, and my parents have canceled his college fund and are using it to pay for my grandparents to get a new vehicle. Dad told me that he was going to try to surprise me with a new vehicle, but that idea was out the window, to which I said I appreciate his offer, but I would have declined it anyway, because I have my reliable O1 Cherokee. My parents have practically disowned him, and it's all so crazy to me, as he was never truly rebellious up until this week. I think he may be dealing with some serious mental crisis, and it wouldn't surprise me if his mug shots up on my local news. I'm not too well-versed on psychology, mechanical engineering degree, so I ask, is there anyone out there with an idea as to why he may be going through this? Update 3. My mom's birthday dinner was yesterday evening and I decided to go because they were eating at an expensive restaurant and they offered to pay my way fully. Free food sounded good to me. Those that were there were me, my sister, my brother, my parents, my uncle and his wife, mom's side, both mid-40s and their twins, 19 male and female. I've always gotten along with their son, but their daughter, who will be called R., has despised me for as long as I can remember. My dad was pulling out his wallet for his ID so he could get a drink, and R said, in a mocking manner, Oh, oh, my dad's name. Hide your wallet, you don't want my name, getting in there. I looked at her, red in the face and embarrassed, and said something along the lines of your girl best friends have to say that to every guy in your friend group, because of how you get around. She is a known cheater. She got upset and started crying, and my uncle started berating me for talking to his daughter like that, and that I was still on thin ice for what I was framed for. I got angry, flipped him off, and left the restaurant. I called my dad and he said that I have nothing to apologize for, but my mom wants me to because she wants to keep the peace between her side of the family and ours. My uncle texted me demanding an apology and R put a post out on Instagram about toxic family members. This is where I come to you again, Reddit, Ida, just a little more context to my background. I was punished and neglected from my mid-teenage years up until I moved out 
because of what my brother did to me, and it left me with trauma and trust issues from everyone around me. I'm usually level-headed, but everyone knows that what happened is a very sensitive subject. Mini update, just got off the phone with my aunt, Ra's mom, and she gave me the most sincere apology that I've received in the past month. She said she has dealt with R and my uncle, don't know how, but R did take down the post and my uncle did send me a single sorry. Final update, first and foremost, my mom actually straight up apologized to me for everything. From not taking my side at dinner, for the way I was treated for most of my teenage to adult life, and she ended up telling my uncle and cousin off. So this was during a therapy session, and it happened before any of us said anything to start it. My dad apologized to me as well as to my siblings for everything. My brother is now some actual help now, as my parents have admitted to prioritizing me and my sister before this entire ordeal started when I was 15 and the framing began. He apologized to me for everything and was let back into my parents' house, but has to earn his trust back. I don't really care what he has to do, my contact with him is still going to be very, very limited. Also, in other news, I have a date. We met on Tinder around a little over a week ago, and we clicked really well. She lives around 15 minutes from my place, and we're meeting at a sushi place before I take her to the movies. She wanted to see Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm hoping it goes well.